Good evening. This is the Elliott Wave update for the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100 for Wednesday, January the 11th, 2023. Crazy day, crazy week, crazy start to the new year. And the narrative got pretty strong today in terms of we're preparing for uh, uh, the market to be relaxed about tomorrow's uh, release of the CPI data, which the consensus is saying that it's going to come in pretty good. It's going to show a decrease in inflation on the consumer level. Now, I have been talking about in the podcast, the ones that I do on Saturday, that the smoke and mirrors is being presented to us simply by the way that the government agencies and the Fed tally these year-over-year -year inflation prices is kind of a setup and do not reveal the true picture. So because what they're talking about is 2021 over 2022, and now we're going to be looking at CPI for the month of December over the month of December from 2020, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. They're not, they're not realistic pictures of, of what's really going on with inflation. And that doesn't seem to matter. Now, what also doesn't seem to matter is that we have this continuous flow of capital back into our markets. Uh, particularly today, it kind of started to come back into the tech sectors. And these are the sectors that got annihilated towards the end of last year, as we saw a lot of ETF and 401k money and whomever get out of these positions. We've also, leading up to the beginning of, which will start on Friday now, our earnings season, we have gotten pretty much from the, all of the large titans what they're going to do to prepare for the coming recession, the layoffs that have already been planned, the additional layoffs that are being added via Amazon and uh, Salesforce, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now that's all been swept away going like, that's that's fine. That's going to see how you're going to save money now. So that puts you back in the red. We're going to pile back into your stock. Whatever the reasons or whatever they're saying about all of it, it to me is not real because how am I going to look out to say, what the conditions and what's going to be happening six months or nine months or or for the balance of 2023 when all we have gotten from analysts and and economists is how the united states and the globe are dropping into a recession are experiencing high inflation and honestly if you really think that inflation is kind of taken care of please go check your gas and electric bill for number one, please go to the grocery store and tell me what you paid last week and what you're paying this week. Go to your grocery store and try to find a dozen eggs if you live in the state of California. Go to the grocery store and start looking for what's now shorted flour, bread. These are things that are going to suddenly start to really fall into place. And it's not deflationary. It's inflationary. So what all of this is about, again, I think just revolves around where we're lining things up to expire on Friday. As we enter in to beginning of earnings, which start on Friday, and by the way, they switched it around, and it's the banks. The banks will come out first. And there are many that are now talking about, oh, the banks are going to do great. But yet, Goldman Sachs announced that they're cutting bonuses. They're, they're laying off people and cutting back on bonuses. J.P. Morgan, laying off people, cutting back on bonuses. So, well, well, well that must mean you're really going to have great earnings. Whatever we want to read into it, we don't know. We're going to find out. Now, what took place today? A little bit of everything. Now, first thing you're going to notice here on this in this hourly chart of the S&P is that I have removed the minor two. I've removed the wave C. Now, I just want to take you back to 
likely when this all started and when we got to here, which was so long ago on Monday. Now, I said that I can count up five and I was putting, actually, it probably was even lower, um, counting up five and I put the minor wave two in. And yep, yesterday I kind of slid the two up the C and the minor two up to here. Actually, no, that's where I did put it because we got a very nice decline coming off and I felt that I could count five waves down. When I went down to the 30 and the 15, it looked pretty good. But in actuality, obviously it's not because five down in and of itself would never be the entire thing. And this thing went up and went above that high. So what we were considering going on here is now all a part of this C wave. Now, I want to kind of bring this back out. And I'm going to bring this into focus. By, I'm going to take it up to the four-hour chart. I want to look at this against everything that's already happening. And again, we are getting so excited about this move and this move after this that, oh, the world is great. Everything's fine. We're all, everything, all intents and purposes, we're just chugging along at a very good pace. Fed's got to pivot. This is going to happen. We're back in the blue, back in the green, I should say. And I don't know. I don't know. Now, if I look at what Elliot was telling us about the characteristic of personalities of waves, boy, it fits. It fits because it's renewed hope. Renewed that we oh we've we've reached the lows and we're going to start buying, and if they think that was the low, what do they think about that? That's the super low. What do they think about the lows that we've hit before? So again, it's all a part of just the this ongoing corrective process. It's all a part of trying to get an understanding about truly what is happening and how do we balance the. The narrative against reality. So the technical picture against reality. And there are times when it's like, it just doesn't make sense. This is one of those times. But if I take a step back and I take another look at it, again, when I, or when the market had reached this level and I moved that too, I said, I can count five up. I said, either it's going to complete this wave two because it had reached 0 0.382 resistance. And I thought, well, that kind of fits now, doesn't it? And again, I need to add onto this chart what I put on the other one. And I guess I forgot. I'm just going to put back our minor wave two resistance levels. It had popped above, came back below that 0.382. I thought, well, that all works. Came back down below. And I thought it was falling in five. And it had broken back below some moving averages. It all fit. Well, of course, that ended and we started to rally and then we couldn't. And we, now we just picked up and we kept on going in anticipation of this number that's coming out tomorrow, of the CPI number that everybody's now convinced, oh, this is going to be great. It's a great number. I'm not going to get caught like there or there without realizing it's like, well, you've now taken it up to the level where they're going to come in and sell it to you. Because the reality is now we're hearing from the Fed chairman and we're hearing from other Fed governors as they go on the stump around the country. Don't get too carried away with this upside right now. Inflation is not under control. Don't get carried away with the CPI numbers, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Don't get carried away with the jobless claims or the employment situation number. This is what people are grabbing onto to hold onto a bullish picture. And I don't even know if it's really, you know, retail that's coming in. Oh, yeah, we're bullish again. Because remember, research and stats show us that retail is not investing in individual stocks. Some are, don't get me wrong, some are. But what they're investing in are ETFs. Get that, take that broader picture, get that broader view. ETFs are operated by asset managers who take this money and they must put it to work. And we went over 
that there are basically three major, there are, there are more than just three, but three major, major holders of ETFs. BlackRock, State Street, and Vanguard. They control a lot of equities. There are others involved in there. And we hear about many of them. We hear about the debacle that's happening to Kathy Woods. And she's not giving up because, damn, if Tesla's not going to be $500 a share by 2026. Uh, okay. You see the models she's using? Suggest that. And for all I know, folks, she could be 100% right. But I'll tell you what. I'm not so sure that I want to hang on to my position in Tesla as it drops 77%. But she is, and she's adding to it because she's not going to get out. And so it's like, fine. It's the same thing that I teach when I'm we're teaching traders. If you're in a position, and even if your heart and your gut and your count and everything tells you, it's going to turn. It's going to turn. It's going to turn. It's going to go the direction that my trade is set up for. And I'm like, you're breaking your own rules because I'm going to tell you there's three general rules, three rules that you should never, ever break. One, first one is being what's your trigger? What's your trigger? That's your entry. The second one is what's your goal and or your target for the trade? The third and the most important in my mind is where are you going to get out when the trade becomes invalidated? That's the one that everybody seems to want to walk over. I say, ah, you know, it's going to turn, it's going to turn, it's going to turn. I'm long. I'm going to hold on to my long. I'll add to my long. Mm. Now you're down $1,000. Now you're down $2,000. Now you're down $3,000. It's going to turn. It's going to turn. It's got to turn. Now you're down 5000 When do you want to get out? I talk to more people that walk themselves into very large losses because they do not want to get out for fear that the second that they do, the market will turn and go in the direction of, of that they intended. So my question again is, why would you want to sit through that loss, which blocks your mindset when the market is going against your trade, when you, your, your mindset is telling you, get out of the trade? Now, consider this. You get out of the trade. It gives you the opportunity to take a stand back and go like, what the market really is doing. So maybe now you get to make another choice. Oh, it is going to go against what I thought. So you're long. Maybe it is going to go short. And maybe you're going to want to catch that trade because there's more to catch. As you're waiting, like it's going to turn, it's going to turn. And then when you get the turn, you're back in the market. But guess what? You made back what you lost, and now you're in the plus again. And now you're all set. You get your up move. You're a happy camper. You, you became a trader. So I don't understand a lot of things that, that goes on. But one thing I do know is that we get to play, and we get to play fair for ourselves. So if we bear all of this in mind, there's going to be no reason to be hanging on to a negative position. So if we have our rules and we have where we want to get in, what our target is, and where we will get out when the trade becomes invalidated, how, how am I going to determine where it becomes invalidated, Michael? Well, if you've got a goal that you're you're looking to make $500 on the trade, you don't want to risk more than $500. That's, that's, not, that's bad risk reward. So maybe you're going to get out down $200. Maybe you're going to get out down $250. Keep it one to two. You know, keep your parameters in mind. Keep the health of your account in mind. We are here because we want to make money. And we are here because we'd like to come back tomorrow and trade again. Work. If we've lived and traded through all of this junk, man, I want to catch this ne the next impulse move, which should be easier to recognize and more sustainable and not we're fighting it all the way along. Now, back to what actually took place. The S&P, I felt, was done there. And we got here, and then we got here, and that could have been, there would have been two, minute one, minute two of minor three. Well, they told us overnight that wasn't going to happen, and basically today gave us confirmation, and off we went. Now, 
where did we actually go? To the next resistance level. We went up to 39.85. We popped above 39.85. We closed above 39.85. And we're still hanging out above 39.85. Why? Well, because everybody's got in their mind. And trust me, that's the chatter. It's been going around. 4,000, 4,000, 4,000. In fact, I'll give you the levels. 4,002 to 4,030. Upside? Yeah. If they really want to go crazy after that number tomorrow, 4,065 to 4073 and guess what it still can be a minor wave too i tell you the number of people that want to fight against no it's not can't be yeah it can what it can't do and what will invalidate that count is if it were to break above 4180 then it's no longer a wave two and very likely neither is this so there's a lot really at hand that has been I've been putting on this chart that continues in my mind to be valid. Now, here we are on the daily. And I know there's a lot of fibs out there. Look at it on the daily. It doesn't look like much. But yet when we're in there trading it, you're like, oh, my God, look what they're doing. Look what they're doing. It's like, I know I'm there. I realize that we need to keep things into perspective. This is a smaller wave too. Here was the intermediate. This is a minor. It, In terms of just how it's coming out, it fits. So today, instead of getting upset that, well, gee, I was looking for downside. I didn't get the downside. I got upside. Well, what was my choice? Play the upside. Stay open. I'm not bullish. I'm not bearish. I can play the upside. Remember, I am, I'm a day trader. So I can turn, I can go, and I will, and I did make money today. Now, if you're stuck in a trade, make your choice. If you're positioning, a lot of people, it's like they're putting hedges on, they're doing different things, smart trading. Know when to lift your hedge, when not to lift your hedge. When, when, know when to get out of your position, when not to get out of your position. And again, even if you're getting out of position because you're going to, you, that was it, you hit your stop, you're going to get out. Your very next trade might be just what you just got out of. But when you got into it the first time, the market was not ready to start the next move. So when I'm analyzing and giving you all of these numbers and giving you the counts, I make a very valid and strong attempt to give you all sides, both sides, a continuation in the direction that it's going or a continuation to finish the count. I really do attempt to do that. And I remember very clearly saying, I can count up five, I'm putting the minor two. If we get continuations to the upside and it comes up and breaks that, then this is going to be one of C, two of C. We've got the three of C, a four and a five. Maybe we got the three and a four and a five within all of this. So it's, it's, not the most difficult thing to count. It's not the hardest thing to count. There's a very strong possibility that this is one and two. This is three. This is four. And now this is all a five. That's a possibility. I'm not numbering because we have to remain fluid. But that is one thing that I'm going to talk about. See, one, two. And then we get this gorgeous three. Sloppy, but deep, but still a four. Did not break that one. And then we get one, two. And we get a one, two, three, four, five. This could be a three. I'll measure it out. That's where it would start. And that is 38.98. So it's going to be about 53 points. Let's check this. 38.91 to 39.34. So wave three is not the shortest. Then we get a four, and wave five is the extended wave. Holy cow, right? One, two, one, two, three, four, five, four, five, maybe. And in the case, it's still going to be a C wave. It's going to look pretty funky because it's going to look like a big old three. But they came fast, they came woolly, and it's corrective. So I'm going to leave it that we're still working on 
minor wave two, and within it, the C wave. We have a double ABC, triple, I believe. Triple ABC. And this is all the third. And what really I was expecting them to do, and I'm here, they're doing here. Remember, I kept saying they can't even get up to 0.382. And as a wave two, it has the potential to get to 50% to 62%. And that's where it's going. So again, and I'm guilty for, for I guess, not believing that the Elliot is usually the one that's going to come through. The fibs are usually the one that are telling us the truth. And sure enough, the market goes to it. I've seen that happen before, where I'm like, well, if we're sticking down here and we're going to turn and go lower, boy, that's showing weakness in the market. And at the time it did, but then it would stop and then it roared. And then it went straight up to our resistance zones. So even here, it got close to the 50, so I could have called it. And I thought, ah, that could be the start of the next wave down. Then they go like that. Well, no, now they got above the 50 to put that capper on it. And that looks like they're likely going to get it above 4,000 and likely up to 4,030. And trust me, there are, there are triggers all the way. So I'm leaving this for tomorrow. This is either the biggest setup we've seen in a long time. And this number will come out and they're going to try to hit it with their buy button. And the sellers, I believe, my gut tells me, are sitting out there waiting and people are going to get annihilated. Now, if I'm wrong, this is just going to keep going. Now, what could it be then? I'm just, it's going to be a little bit longer update, but please bear with me. Remember, I've been talking. If this gets moved over to here, and I change all the degrees in this thing. And the primary A comes here, and we're in a primary B. And this is intermediate wave A of primary B, intermediate wave B of primary B, or maybe it's not done yet. And we still have a intermediate C wave to finish primary B. Yep, then we're going up here. that remains alt alternate. It really does. I just don't have a lot of reasons to back away from the current count based on this. I don't have that based on the noise that we're hearing about interest rates and about this is going to happen and that's the Fed's got this, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. When you get a bunch of people sitting around a table, you're going to get a bunch of different opinions. Some may be correct, some may be likely far-fetched, et cetera, et cetera. But that, to me, is always the problem. Remember, it's like talk about having a mindset. When you're having a mindset and you're sitting down to trade, you really don't want to take a bullish or a bias, bullish or bearish bias. You want to remain open to trading what's in front of you. You don't want to hear the noise. Oh, my God, did you see Apple? Oh, my God, did you see Tesla? Oh, my God, did you see you know, this or that? Or look at that. And what? Who's doing what? Whatever is going to happen, it gets reflected in the price action. My goal is to follow that price action, get in, get out, make my money and say, thank you. And that remains possible. All right, I'm going to go over. Now, by the way, the moving averages are on the hourly chart, totally lined up to continue to go up. So again, when this is over, yeah, that's what I'm looking for. But guess what? Now, because we've pushed even higher, I would expect the response, if it's going to be negative, to be pretty severe. Again, we've pumped an awful lot into this market from last Friday. And it's mm -hmm. only been three days. This is a lot of money being pumped back into the market. But at least we forget. $6.1 trillion out there searching for alpha. Give me a home where the alpha does roam. And that's what they're doing. In my opinion, is there anything wrong with that? No, that's what their job is. Invest the money that's been given it to you. Make it work. Give me a return, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So if it comes to a, a, an abrupt end, because that, CPI number 
comes out anywhere different than what they're saying, particularly to the upside, wow, it could be devastating. Now, over to the NASDAQ. Crazy little NASDAQ. NASDAQ caught the wind today. They just caught it. And they held higher through the whole thing. NASDAQ is heading for the stars, or heading for the moon, but in no different condition. And I got to move this again because they keep going up. I thought I had this out of the way. So, uh, you know what, though? In fact, I'm just going to. Uh, let me do it differently. Remove. I'm just going to take them off. We know what they are. We know where they are. I know that this is A, B. Same deal. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Screaming. And the last hour, wow. They took it from 419 up to 480. And it's push, 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 money, push, money, push, money in. And you see, you know, stocks that they've annihilated, they just kind of pump up. Now, we came in on Monday. And Tesla was down 11 or $12 from expiration on the, the Friday before. Before the end of Monday, they had it back up. And it's been up ever since. Now, we're talking that it, it, it jumped back up to like 113, 114. Now it's jumped back up to 123, which is where it was last Friday. It's crazy, but there you have it. Apple, back about 133, 134. It has resistance up at 134. It has even stronger resistance, I'm told, at 136. I have no reason to disbelieve that. These are, this, these are subscribers, folks. You're listening to them. They come in and they give their opinion. And it's valid. A lot of it is very valid. Their system and their and their anal analysis may not be exactly the same as mine or a different technique or a different style. But often we come up with the same areas. So again, I think we got a little bit more to go, obviously. But here we are on that hourly. Look at that. We're all a little bit extremely oversold. You'll never hear them. Excuse me, not oversold, overbought. You'll never hear them say, oh, we're extremely overbought. And here's why. This is what just burns me all the time. Negative doesn't sell airtime. I've had that tossed in my face more than once. Negative does not sell airtime. So we're never going to tell you that it's way overbought. But they'll be the first on the horn to say, the markets are extremely oversold. Because everybody wants to buy the bottom. Okay. So I think we, we, we've we got to leave this open for 11,496. And then we have 11,550 to 565. Could it get there? Yeah, it can. And when it goes above it, 11,740, 11,879. Now, what's that look like if we open this up? Where is that wave to? 12,351. 12, so we can get itself up to 11,878 and still be within a minor second wave. That's the high it can't break. And it may go down in flames trying, I got to tell you. So again, I know everybody's like wondering, like, why won't he change his mind? Why won't he get stuck here? I'm not. It's just that the pattern is corrective. It's not a bullish pattern to me at all. So I still have one, two, one. I'm looking for the two. It's taking a long time. It's blasting in a sea wave. Everything's kind of lining up. Difficult to count? Yeah. It has been. I'll, I'll give myself that and everybody else. But it's falling into line. So I'm going to go back down to that hourly. We got our markers. Downside, it's going to be the same story. It's just going to go. This was a good start. and, it, and but, you, but if you notice, everybody was still just sitting there talking. It wasn't like, oh, my God. 
It wasn't like your focus is on the screen. They walked it. Had a couple of blah, 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 blah. But then suddenly look up and like, whoa, look what they did. You will know when this is going down because it'll be fast, furious. That's what I think. Off of what is happening, I would think. So it's going to get interesting because I think that we're we're very close. If anything, we need a pullback. If anything. And it has to be bigger than that. So for tomorrow, we got that number. CPI and jobless claims, 8.30 Eastern. And then we'll go from there. Leave room for the upside. I believe, again, that that CPI will be the catalyst for direction. And right now, everybody is leaning heavy. That, oh, we got to go up, we got to go up, we got to go up. Look what they're going to report. They're going to report an improvement in, in inflation. Fed has to pivot now. I've heard it. It's not I'm making this up. I've heard it. And so we got so much so that the Fed themselves are out there on the stump saying, mm, no, don't get carried away on this. It's not. By the way, here you go, Salesforce. Big Hit by downgrade as cloud software giant falls into growth purgatory. I want their job. I want to make up these terms. Growth purgatory? What the hell is that? Company after company after company comes out and tells us, we're not going to be doing so well as everybody thinks. Okay, that's no problem. Let's just buy it now. So anyway, we'll see. Tomorrow's another day. Be prepared. Have your mindsets on, folks. Whatever's going to happen, you're going to have to focus and you're going to be to be in their trading. Best of luck. Our next update will be on Thursday, January the 12th.